So what have I been watching? Um, so I watched some movies. One of them I actually bought today, and then two of them I've had for like at least a two or three weeks, like almost a month now. Um, first one up here, Freakonomics, the movie. So this is based on a book, I think. Yeah, it says based on the best-selling book that sold over four million copies. Never read the book. Um, you know, if by now you should know my stances on uh, on um, you know when it comes to not reading the book that the movie is based on, how I feel about like adaptations of books and all that. Um, if you've been on my channel for a while, but just a quick refresher, I'm okay with them. Uh, I you know I I. I look at the movie as a movie. If it's not a great adaptation, fine. I'll, I'll say that or whatever. But if it's still a good movie, who cares, right? You know, it's a well-made film. I don't look for how accurate it is to the book. So that's why I tend to not read the book first. I watch the movie first because then you enjoy the film more. And then you see them as their own separate things, which is a good thing. And you're not going in like, Okay, they took this out. Oh my gosh. And I like, you know, I, I enjoy it as a film. I enjoy the book as a book. And if it's, and you know, some movies are disappointing as fans of the book. Um, and I think that's totally cool if you feel that way. But just, I don't believe in trashing movies because they're not accurate to the book. Because there are tons of great movies that are nothing like their books. Um, so this is kind of a documentary, I would say. It's an interesting documentary. I, I don't know if I would call it. I don't know. I, I can't really... I don't, I don't even know how to describe this movie. It's very strange. It's, it's a very uniquely directed movie. It's very stylistic, very kind of visionary. Um, I enjoyed it in a lot of areas. I, I, it's a... So it's not... I don't know if I would call it a good film, but I would at least say, yeah, an interesting watch. Um, like, I watched it. I found it interesting, kind of fascinating to watch it had a lot of things to say that i've never really thought about i don't know if i would call it a good movie though it's it's very stylistically and uniquely directed and i really like that but i don't know what kind of the point of the film was if that makes sense i don't know and, but I, I i think it's it's definitely worth a watch if it sounds interesting to you. I can't really say too much of what it is about because I don't even fully understand what this film is about. It's a documentary kind of about strange things that I don't really quite get. And it's interesting. I'll say that. Then we got Fonterra. Um, this one was a shocker. So what this movie is about, it's about this guy... Uh, he's from Arizona, Mexico, and he goes over the border. Okay, he's not like a legal citizen, and um, this character, his name is Miguel. He's played by Michael Pena, and he, um, his wife, kind of gets accused of like murder. Then she dies, and there's all these different things that go on it. Um, what I really liked about this movie is Michael Pena is a comedy actor, right? I've only seen him in comedy movies, like crap like Ant-Man and stuff like that. He can be funny. Um, like, he's not, I don't think he's like a great comedic talent or anything. But I think he can be mildly funny. Um, and he gives an actually thought-provoking, interesting performance that's deep, layered, and emotional. Um, and I was like, Michael Pena did this? Like, what? Like, this is not the actor I would expect to do this. Also, what I like about this film is it, you know, there's English within the movie. It's set within America, right? Because he goes over the border. But it's, it, you know, the characters are speaking Spanish. Um, at least, it, or Espanol. Yeah, Espanol. And their subtitles every time they speak it, right, but it's a lot to, of a, it's really interesting to have a movie that's, like, set within America, and the characters not be speaking, you know, uh, English, and speaking Espanol, and 
you know, that's, and there's characters within the movie that speak English. And I was, I was waiting, I thought, oh, when they go here to America, they're going to start speaking English. But he didn't understand how to speak English. So it kind of made it more interesting and more of a unique film. It's not, I, I would say this is actually like a pretty good movie. I don't know if I'd call it a great movie, but it's definitely worth a watch. I think both of these are honestly uniquely directed. They're they're fascinating watches. I don't really know any other movies like these. I, I absolutely uh, love this film. This film, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. I think I'm going to have to sit on that film and uh, re-watch it maybe again. It's a very strange watch. Uh, and then finally, we have The Adventures of Tintin or The Adventures of Tantan. If you're French, um, I like I got this at FYE. If you saw my earlier video I uploaded on this channel, um, you know what, what else did I get? I, I don't know how I'm already forgetting this. This is how I know I have too many movies. I, yeah, I got Sea Biscuit, and then uh, where is it? Where is it? Where did I put it? I'm trying to find out where I put it. Oh, right. Uh, I got those movies. And, uh, I, you know, I, I wanted to watch Tintin. Uh, which just got me interested to rewatch more of Steven Spielberg's films. Um, you know, I, I have a lot that I haven't seen and a lot I need to rewatch. Um, Jurassic Park, I need to rewatch and do reviews for all those before the new one comes out. Which, I, it's not coming out till next year, but I want to have those already out. I don't want to have to crunch and do things like that but I, I probably will start doing that pretty soon here but um i'm a big uh steam silver fan if you don't know and um you know i was this movie got me excited to rewatch some of the movies and definitely probably tomorrow or something like that i'm gonna rewatch et uh, because I haven't seen, I haven't seen E.T. like once, and I know, like, it's, E.T. is like one, one of the movies that's like considered the most watched film of all time. E.T. is fine to me, it, it, like, it's a really well directed, beautiful cinematography, really good editing, fantastic score, pretty good performances, like, whoa, really good effects, but like, it's just kind of like a fun alien movie, it doesn't really have too much to say and that's fine that's what the film is but for what it is it's great but like i don't know i don't know I, but um you got the adventures of, of tintin or tantan here and like i said i got this for six bucks halfway really happy i have this uh i haven't seen this in a while i remember seeing this in the theater and i really liked it in the theater when i was younger and i was like yes they're gonna make a sequel because the film ends on a cliffhanger that got me interested in checking out the comics, which I never did. I, it got me interested in doing it. I want to find, like, um, an American box set that has, like, all the comics and go through them. I'm sure that's, like, a thing out there. I don't know. Um, but this, what's interesting about this movie, I was looking down here at some of the names on the back here because you can see that. That's a lot of names down there. But uh, it says here, executive producers or no sorry produced by steven spielberg okay peter jackson kathleen kennedy that's right the current president of Lu lucasfilm if you don't know she's actually worked with steven spielberg a bunch but it's still like kind of a little bit of shocker when i read that because I, I i forget like oh that's right she used to be a producer on a ton of things before she actually got to do run Lucasfilm. We just show she she has no business like running Lucasfilm night, right? She's she's a producer and she's good at that. She produces a lot of great stuff, but just like she was kind of thrown into the situation of being a leader uh, at Lucasfilm, and I think everyone kind of realizes that now. Um, I don't think she's doing the worst job, but I also just don't think she's doing the best part. Okay, screenplay by, no joke, Edgar Wright is one of the people credited for doing the screenplay. If that doesn't already set the buy pretty high, those are all four big names involved with this movie. Um, there are great aspects about this movie. 
I don't think it's a great movie. It borrows a little too much, like, kind of the adventure aspect of, like, Indiana Jones and, um, you know, like, Pirates of the Caribbean. Those things are, like, those movies are great. Uh, at least the first Pirates, anyways. I've never actually seen the other Pirates movies. I never, I never actually watch them. Uh, but... Right, Indiana Jones. It's also great. Uh, at least the first three, anyways. I, I King of Crystal Skull. Get that out of here. It is... Kind of this great... Um, it's, it's just clearly, like, inspired by it. What I enjoy about this that it actually brought those things back, because, right, Indiana Jones, they made, they used to make adventure movies like that. And they just don't do that anymore. It's a really good at thing that they did with this. And I think that's why it wasn't a big hit when it came out. I believe it came out in 2013, something like that. But it's because, frankly, we don't make movies like this anymore. Superhero movies and things like that have kind of taken the place of that type of stuff, which is unfortunate because those types of movies are great, and I don't see why we can't have both, right? But people, apparently people don't want to see that, and it's just kind of like a shame because now we're never going to get a sequel, which this movie is incredibly well directed, it's really well edited, it's really fast paced, the action's incredible, it's really well choreographed, well done sequences. The film is constantly moving at a brisk pace, like it's constantly moving. There is so much crap that happens in this movie that you, that there's a guy who dies and then like it jumps to something else and you immediately forget that he dies. There's so much. And that, that gets a little frustrating a little times. So like sometimes they just need to slow down. But for the most part, it keeps the film always engaging, always twisting scenes and keeping you like guessing of what's going to happen. It's constantly keeping you engaged. And that's a really smart screenplay and direction to it. Uh, the music is by John Williams, so the score is obviously incredible. Um, not one of his best, but it's still really good. And I think it's uh, really well voice acted too. But, but my main problem with this movie is just the animation. I hate motion capture. So motion capture is good technology, right? The Planet of the Apes movies. Right, that's a live action film. When you take, you're going to animate these things, you want them to fit in with the real people and give these realistic movements that an actual ape would kind of give, and that if they were to be like that, and those work really well. But when it's you, when that type of technology is used for animated films, right, because the point of the film is to get. Um, the point of like an animated film is unrealistic movements. The characters can do things they wouldn't normally do in live action. And, um, and so, you know, that type of technology is the opposite of that, where it's trying to give you things that look realistic. Now, granted, this is not like one of the worst ones, right? Mars Needs Moms is horrible. Uh, Polar Express, a lot of people like, I can see why people like it, but it's, I, no. Just no. It's just, it's it's so much of not a film. Um, with what it's trying to do, the animation's so uncanny. This is one of the better ones. Like it looks good, but at times it just looks weird. The characters' faces at times look weird. Sometimes the lighting on them is really weird because you can just tell the, where the movements are coming from, and it's just really odd. They do make like great use out of the animated aesthetic of this movie, but like. It's still like a technology that's uncanny and should not ever, ever be used in this way. I uh, People who think animation needs to be realistic need to stop. We do not need live action remakes of animated stuff. We do not need motion capture. It is garbage. There's a reason the motion capture trend of animated movies died out. And this was one of the last ones. And this was the only good one. Sorry. I haven't seen Monster House. Maybe that one's good, but like I've seen bits and pieces of it. And I can tell you, just I don't think it's like, going to be that good. All right. So I did watch some more X Men, um, which I'm actually I actually just finished watching a bunch of X Men just now, and I probably after this video I'm probably going to end up watching more. Um, the reason why I started watching all the X Men is because. Well, then I'm going to have to finish it so I can do my review of the X-Men animated series from the 90s. Um, 
I I got to episode 10. That's the episode I'm on. Uh, there were 19 episodes in season 3. Um, the Dark Phoenix storyline like the was really actually pretty well handled for for what it is. It's of course it's better than the X-Men movies. Everything about this show is better than the X-Men movies. X-Men movies are not good movies and they're not good X-Men stories for the most part. Days of Future Past is like the exception in that. Um, X-Men 2 also. But, um... <clears throat> and then you have, a uh, trying to think. Oh, First Class. That's also a great X-Men story. Besides that, those are the exception. The rest of the X-Men movies are absolute garbage. They're just so dated and just like, we're, we're doing things the way we used to do 20 years ago when we haven't, when we moved on and have, don't do that crap anymore. And it's upsetting. And, you know, but I think that's really well handled and I really liked it in the show. So I'm going to say it's not the most accurate Dark Phoenix adaptation possible, but because obviously it, it, it feels a little rushed because like, if you know anything about the Dark Phoenix storyline, this isn't just like a comic you can go read. It's like 40-something issues of X-Men comics all come together to make this one story. It's a lot of story that requires a lot of build-up to be done right. And so, of course, it feels rushed. And it's really weird to be dropped within this season. Um, they're going to do more with it because there's, like, right here, there's, there's, like, another four episodes that have to do with it. And I'm going to watch those episodes... But I'm just saying, like, that's something that is um, a thing there that, you know, you got all that story and they're kind of having to cram it in some places. And, yeah, which kind of, I'm hoping that they do less of. But I'm excited to watch season four next. And then I'll get to season five and finally finish the series. Um, so probably in the next, like, three or four days I should be finished with that actually I don't know about that because um like I guess I'm watching other movies and then I have a lot of stuff on Netflix too so I don't know when I'm gonna finish it so don't don't quote me on anything but uh, I'm gonna try to finish it within the next three or four days um but uh but uh, alright let's go into my latest uh what time is it anyway i don't even know what time it is i'll check in a minute um but tonight at, i'm staying up till midnight again i know i do this a lot if you don't know like i stay up till midnight because yeah, i'm gonna mute it so that way i can i hate that thing when you click on something on netflix and it starts playing like a trailer well you haven't even clicked on it like you try to read the synopsis and then it just starts talking to you and it's like I'm trying to read something here. Like, you have this for me to read, and now I can't do that because you're trying to play the freaking episode. And, like, stop it. I didn't tell you to do that. But anyways, um, you know, I do that a lot because what happens is, um, you know, I like to review movies day one. I want to be the first one out so I can get a decent number of views and traction. And uh, when I talk about films... I like to review um, as soon as possible, and it just gets me in on the conversation. I like talking about movies. So I stay up till midnight, watch them when they come out. I won't always do this because it's, you know, eventually will be something that will get way too difficult to continue doing, but I'm doing it right now because I'm in quarantine. I don't really have to uh, do anything at the moment. You know, pretty soon I'm going to be starting back up school and stuff, so that will be a thing that will interrupt that. Um, but tonight we have John was trying to contact aliens. Um, so this is like a movie about this guy trying to contact aliens. So that's kind of cool. And then we have the crimes that bind. And it's some crime movie uh, from what I tell you. I don't know too much about these movies. Um, the only reason I heard about them is I'm looking in the Netflix section and they're here and I can watch them. And then, so yeah, and then, you know, the day after I have Class of 83, Lucifer Season 5, Netflix Sleepover, 
for the sleepover. So, you know, that's here. So there's a lot of stuff um, that's coming out. And here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm probably going to watch One and Only Ivan. One, I'm probably going to watch the One and Only Ivan, uh, Muppets Now, and all the Netflix movies that are coming out that day. First thing. Like, I'm going to watch all that first. Review all that stuff. Get it out of the way. And then... If... If I cannot finish Lucifer Season 5 in the first day it comes out, I will review it on Saturday. So... In the process of that, you will have four reviews out that day. It may be a fifth one if I can finish this the first season. I believe there's also a new Amazon Prime movie coming out. I don't know if I'll be watching that because I already have so much on my plate that I just don't want to throw things and make it more difficult. But I have a lot of things I'm watching. I want to jump into Lucifer season five as soon as possible, but I'm not going to. Because these things will, these things are shorter, quicker, easier to get in and out of. So I'll watch those first, and then if it happens, I will finish this for season five by Friday. If not, well, then I will. Just, I don't know. But point is, I got a lot of stuff on my plate. I'm working everything out, guys. I'm. Uh, I want to review more current movies because that's what I used to do before I, this whole quarantine started and now I'm trying to do that again and it's, it, you know, I'm, I can't go to the theater and do it so I'm trying to do it at home but it's just, it's just frustrating because, you know, at least at the theater there were movies I could get excited about. I'm not even getting movies I'm excited about anymore. It's just like, I don't know what this movie is. I guess I'll watch it because it's all I have left to watch. And it's kind of a bummer. But if you guys like it, that makes me feel better. And then I can watch the movies that I do own and do like. And talk about them some more. Or watch movies that I've been meaning to watch forever. And I just bought them and I'll watch them. You know, that's 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 what I like. You know, I can do that. Um, and I enjoy doing that too. So, you know, I, it's the best of both worlds. You guys get your, like, camera time. It's the best of both worlds. It's the best of both worlds. I don't even watch Hannah Montana. I don't even know how I know this, but yeah. What I mean is like, you know, you guys get your reviews of the current stuff that you guys want to watch. And then I get to talk about the stuff I like and I'm interested in. So that's why I have a main channel on the second channel. I talk about the stuff I really like. My main channel, I talk about the stuff that you guys want to hear about. So... Like I said, best of both worlds. Thank you. I'm losing my mind.